Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to class for all our in-person students. And welcome to Rohit and Karen and Surya and Samuel and Erila. Thank you for joining class this morning. Um, welcome, Nina. Thank you for joining class. OK. Our in-person students are uh, still st settling in, so we'll just give them a couple of minutes. OK? Sean, can you come and lead us in prayer, please? You can come here so our uh, students, our online students can also see you. And <laughs> oh, you're so tall. OK, you can stand somewhere at the back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, now we can see you, yes. Can you please lead us in prayer? You'll be a little loud, so it'll just carry into the mic. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you very much for guiding us all today for this wonderful morning. Heavenly Father, please guide us and help us to study your word, Heavenly Father, to understand your word and to keep our friends. And please use my mind, Heavenly Father, to help us to learn about your word. Amen. Okay, this is Sean, and uh, he's. Uh, <laughs> you can say hi, Sean. Yeah. This is Sean, and he is uh, from Bangalore City. He's, he stays very close to our uh, Bible college. Thank you, Sean. OK, uh, last week, before we ended class, one of our online uh, students had a question. Is uh, I don't think she has joined classes yet, right? Uh, one of them had asked a question regarding uh, women covering their head. So I don't think she has joined classes yet. So let me just check. OK, um, maybe we can answer the question later on because she's not yet uh, joined. OK, so we'll continue with um, our lesson. Uh, we're following the book, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. And all of our um, online students, um, the course content, this book, the PDF copy has been posted on the stream page in your Google Classroom. And we are um, looking at um, uh, chapter five, the price of the high calling, OK? The price of the high call of God. We began this chapter um, last week, OK? And um, you'll remember what we looked at last week? Anyone? Price of the high calling of God? What does it mean? OK. We know that uh, fulfilling God's purpose for our life is something very exciting. It's also uh, the best, um, you know, the best thing that we can do in life. Uh, the best way to live life is to fulfill God's purpose for our life. It's also very something very exciting for us. But we also know that it's not going to be, yeah, it's not going to be that easy. It's, it's going to cost us something, OK? And Jesus said in Luke chapter um, uh, 14, verse 27, uh, if you do not carry your cross or you know bear your cross, which means if you do not carry your cross uh, and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. Yes. OK, so we can't be God's disciples if we are not willing to carry our um, cross. So we know that the cross is a place of suffering. Uh, Jesus suffered on the cross. We also know it's a uh, uh, it's um, a cross of separation. So even as Jesus was separated from the Father, so you know even when we carry our cross, it's it's a place of suffering. It's a place of separation. It's also a place of cross is also a place of resurrection. Okay, we looked at three. S sacrifice. Good. OK, thank you. So it's a place of um, suffering. It's a place of separation. And it's a place of sacrifice. OK, so we'll just look at, um, uh, you know, two sacrifices that we need to make. We're talking about, you know, uh, counting, the, uh, paying the cost uh, for our calling in Christ Jesus. OK, uh, there is um, sacrifice that we have to make. There are two kinds of sacrifice. One is daily sacrifice, OK? 
uh, daily sacrifice you know we uh, jesus tells us we need to carry our cross daily every day yes okay so which means that daily we need to make sacrifices so what are the sacrifices we need to make daily to follow jesus Yeah, your sleep time, you know, yes, uh, sleep is something all of us love. But, you know, just giving up your sleep to wake up early in the morning or uh, to stay up late and pray, intercede, to read God's word. Also, maybe now because all of you are students, you know, giving up your sleep time, your leisure time, your entertainment time just to, you know, study because you're being you're learning so many courses, you know, just utilizing this time. You're just saying, God, you know, you've given me this opportunity. I just want to leave everything aside, you know, uh, every entertainment, all the fun. I just want to concentrate on learning, reading your word, receiving, preparing myself so that I can be somebody who effectively handles your word, even as I, as you take me out to preach and to teach or whatever to do, whatever ministry. So good time where you can you know um uh, give up those daily sacrifices make those daily sacrifices just to study god's word just to get into the into the deeper into god's word to uh, see the revelations to hear the revelations to receive to perceive to understand so that you can be used uh, mightily by god what else uh, would you have to make daily sacrifices Your breakfast, <laughs> you, you're all fasting, praying today, so you're giving up your breakfast. Okay, what else? You know, when people around you are doing things that, uh, you know, you shouldn't be doing, you, you're willing to sacrifice. For example, you know, students in school, everybody is copying. But, you know, uh, a child of God is willing to sacrifice and say, God, I'm not going to copy even if I'm not, I'm going to lose marks. I might even fail in this test or might pass. I'm not going to get full marks, but I'm not going to help my friend copy. She's asking me this answer or I'm not going to copy from her. Or it can also be, you know, if you work, uh, some of you are working, you know, uh, and your boss tells you to write something that is wrong or a wrong report or write the wrong um, uh, you know, numbers or, uh, you know, give a false report or do something that's wrong. And you're saying, no, sorry, I can't do that. It's not against my, uh, you know, it's not godly and it's not what God wants me to do. Um, you know, uh, if everybody's making fun of somebody else, but you are not doing that, you know, uh, so, um, you know, if uh, you're working in a corporate and, you know, we know that uh, they take us out for parties, they take us out to uh, resorts for a day out and things like that. And everybody is uh, drinking and you're sitting along with your friends. But instead of drinking beer, you know, you're just drinking fresh lime soda or you're drinking Coca-Cola. And they think that, you know, you're not the cool hep kind of a person, but you're willing to make those um, uh, sacrifices. And, you know, making those daily sacrifices is not uh, something that is big, like giving up your job or moving from one place to another. But these small, small things are very, very important because these small things help you to fulfill God's plan and purpose for your life. Yes, Sean. Yes, Sean is giving us an example from his own life. Um, uh, you know, he's saying that he loves to ride bicycles, goes for likes to go for races and marathon races. And he says every time they have it, it's on a Sunday and during it's during the church time. But he, you know, he wants to go for it, but he's willing to sacrifice that to be uh, in church. Yes, you know, so that is a sacrifice that you um, also make. Nina says taking up something you don't have to, that don't have to benefit others yes okay so sometimes you know the sacrifices that we make are not very big they are small but they are very very important for us to fulfill god's purpose for our life and these small things you know can have consequences for example you know you you tell your boss no i'm not going to lie is he going to be happy with you 
no, you know, he might not give you the promotion. He might not talk to you. He might just walk past your table. He'll act like you don't even exist there. Uh, and it will hurt you. But you'll have to pay the cost for that. Now, suppose, uh, you know, a student is not willing to uh, help their friend copy in the test. She might even lose, he or she might lose a friend. But the child is saying, no, I'm willing to give up my friend for, you know, doing what is right in God's sight. Okay. Um, uh, what else? You know, um, you know, you are not gossiping about others, and then so you know, you can even lose your friends. People will think that you're trying to act very godly and this and that. But there is a cost that we need to uh, pay. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse thirty-one. Paul says, "If you look at your notes, it's there from thirty to thirty-three." But Paul says, "I die daily." Okay, so Paul is saying that daily he dies which means that you know daily he's being persecuted right people are waiting to kill him just like jesus they were waiting to kill him uh, the same here with uh, paul as well you know every time he was facing persecutions he was there were people ready to harm him to kill him to take his life he was in danger day in and day out so every day his life was at risk why because of the cause of christ because he was preaching the gospel uh, uh, so you know and he's saying he's willing to die. Okay. And remember last uh, week when we ended class, we uh, remember Jesus said, unless the grain of wheat falls to ground and does not die, it will not bear fruit. So what does death bring about? Fruitfulness. Yes, death brings about fruitfulness. Uh, so if there is no fru you know, fruitfulness in your life, it means that you're not dying to the things of the flesh. You're not dying to the things of this world. Okay. Because when we die to the things of this world, we can see fruitfulness in any and every area of our uh, lives. It also means that, you know, when we die to things, there's also resurrection that is happening. We're getting ready for resurrection. Remember I said this last week, yes, you know, when uh, the, the seed, it looks like, so it looks dead, it has no potential, it has no life in it, but when you put that seed into the ground, what happens? It has the potential of life, it resurrects, okay? So when we die to the things of the world, it not only brings about fruitfulness, but is, we are also getting ready for uh, resurrections, okay? So daily sacrifice could, uh, sa daily sacrifices could be things that separate us from unnecessary things, unnecessary things which we really don't need. For example, you know, you don't watch a movie just to attend a prayer meeting. Or you, you know, uh, your family is going for a movie or your cousins are going for a movie, your friends are going for a movie, but you're saying, no, I, I won't join you all because, you know, you think you can go back home and, you know, read the Bible or you can pray or join a prayer meeting or... Um, you know, um, uh, another example is, um, you know, uh, you can even uh, give up a Saturday just to come for a weekend school. You know, uh, Saturday is a time when you can get up late, when you can, you know, finish all your uh, uh, work. You can go shopping, you can go window shopping, you can go out and eat with your family, but you're saying no. You know, it's a day when they're having fasting prayer at church. I'll, I'll choose to go there. Or it's a day when they're having a weekend school, I'll go and learn so that I can edify myself spiritually. Okay. So these are some of the sacrifices that we make. So all of you are making a sacrifice today. You all are fasting. Okay. And you're seeing how is it going to help? But you know, these are like seeds that, you know, that you are sowing in into your account that God is going to really bless okay so these daily sacrifices are small but they are important to help us to fulfill god's purpose for our uh, lives okay let's look at what uh, paul says in first corinthians chapter 9 verses 24 to 27 um here he's you know comparing the christian life he's comparing living the christian lives to two kind of people can you tell me what it is can you just look at first corinthians 9 24 to 27 an athlete, thank you, Rin. And what else? Okay, if you look at, uh, you know, um, the verses down below uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 9, he also talks about a soldier. So he compares our Christian life, living our Christian life to a athlete and to a soldier. And we know that, you know, an athlete, you know, gives up so much you know, by any sports, you know, whether it's football, cricket, they give up so much. They give up their family. They they have to go for training. 
uh, they give up entertainment they give give up you know even eating rich food like ice cream and you know all the junk food and everything just to discipline themselves just to train themselves for you know to win a prize to take part in a competition to win a prize or their their greatest goal might be olympics where they want to win a um, a medal and they are doing so much uh, and Paul is saying to receive a perishable crown okay they're working so hard they're disciplining their body they're beating up their body they are uh, being temperate you know um, why because they are uh, doing it to receive a perishable crown so how much more that you know we need to discipline ourselves because we are receiving an imperishable crown that's, that's something that lasts for uh, eternity okay and he says here everyone who competes you know uh, is doing so to win a prize and they're trying to be temperate what is the meaning of temperate self-controlled you know if you look at uh, these gymnasts I, we don't have many of them in our country you know we thank god we have one or two of them budding uh, gymnasts but you know in russia and uh, in the us and other countries these gymnasts are only eight nine and ten years old you know and when the age of six seven they get into training you know they leave their hometown they go to the sports center uh, you know they're practicing their routines throughout the day uh, they're not like you know other children who are they they're not even given ice creams just to you know to it's for self not just for self control for their body to keep their body in in good shape how much they practice how much they work hard they're not like other normal kids their age which is watching and watching cartoon going out and playing enjoying themselves going you know these are really focused on um, you know uh, training themselves so that they can be gymnasts so that they can win a a crown okay so paul is saying uh, likewise like an athlete you know when they have so much of self control how much of self control we need to exercise in every area of our life you know um, in the way we speak uh, self control in the things that we watch in the in our thinking the food that we eat uh, our sleep you know uh, everything entertainment we need to practice uh, self control why because we are receiving a higher crown which is an imperishable crown and hence, we need to live our life under control. We need to be temperate. We need to be self-controlled in everything. Okay. And then he talks also about a soldier. Okay. A soldier, you know, who is he pleasing all the time? The soldier. Huh? Who is a, a soldier pleasing? The king or his commanding officer. Okay, he's always trying to please his commanding officer, he's always ready on the line of duty to take any order. And he can't argue. All he has to say is, yes, sir. <laughs> you know, all he needs to say is, yes, sir. He cannot argue. He just has to take the orders whether he likes it or not. And also we see that soldiers, they're very disciplined, right? Not like civilians. We are all civilians. We can get up at 10, 11, 12 in the morning, in the afternoon, you know. But soldiers, they wake up at, I think, 4 or 5. And then, you know, they have to start their exercises. They have to do everything. They are under strict discipline. So, you know, Paul is saying the same way we also... Now, living our Christian lives, we need to be like the athlete and we need to be the soldier. We need to please our commanding officer, that is Jesus Christ. We need to take orders from him. And we also need to always be on the line of duty, whether we like it or not, always available. Okay. And, you know, we know soldiers also, they're willing to give up their family, everything just to go and be there uh, to serve the country, to serve the nation. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, Paul says something very interesting there. In verse 1, he says, present your bodies as a dead sacrifice. <laughs> what does he say? As a living sacrifice. Yes. He does not say present your bodies as a dead sacrifice now we can make a choice we can either present our bodies as a living sacrifice or we can present our bodies as a dead sacrifice okay when we are not willing to sacrifice things in life give up things in life for the sake of uh, you know living a holy life to pursue righteousness and holiness then we are offering god a dead sacrifice okay but god is asking us to present our bodies as a 
living sacrifice. When do we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice is when we remove every sin that hinders us, everything that, you know, weighs us down, that pulls us down, uh, you know, uh, giving up all of the pleasures just to pursue uh, God's call for our life, just to pursue holiness and righteousness and to please our commanding officer. Okay, so we need to present our bodies as a living sacrifice and we need to do this um, daily. Okay, so daily sacrifices that we need to make, you know, uh, is a life that is fully consecrated, a life that is fully submitted, a life that is fully obedient to the Lord. That's what it means. When you make daily sacrifices, your life is consecrated to God. Consecrated means set apart, holy. Okay, it's also a life that is fully committed, a life that is obedient to God. Okay, and then the second thing is life sacrifices. This does not happen daily. Okay, it happens at, uh, you know, strategic moments in our life at different times and different points in our life. It is much far greater than the daily sacrifices that it, we make. It, um, it, uh, the daily sacrifices are small, but they are important. But we see that these life sacrifices happens at certain times, at certain points in our life uh, when God will ask us to take a big step. Okay, uh, let me give you uh, two examples. One of Abraham. You know, was it uh, when God called Abraham to leave his father's uh, household and go to a place where he's asking him to go? Was it a daily sacrifice or a, uh, a life sacrifice? Life sacrifice, which also involves daily sacrifice. Okay, so it was a life sacrifice. Now, what if um, Abraham said, uh, you know, God, you can just bless me here, you know, in my own land. In the whole, in the same geographical area that I am. Anyway, all you want is to have a big nation. It does not matter whether I'm here or I'm there. Okay, you can even bless me here and right here because all my relatives are here, my parents are here, my uncles, my brother, their families, everybody is here. Then, um, and you're telling me to go to a land which I don't even know of. How can it be? Okay. Now we know that. Abraham had no questions. He just packed up and he left. Okay, He took on God's call on his life. And then when he went to the place that God had appointed for him, portioned for him, he receives God's blessing. Okay, So we see that when he obeyed God, it was credited to him as righteousness. And we see, you know, because of that, it was a great nation that came about. And we see how God moves through in and through that nation. Another example, can you think of another example? The numerous examples in the Bible, can, can you think of another example? About somebody who God asked to make a daily uh, life sacrifice. Yes, Sean. Elisha. Okay. Okay, uh, good. He's saying Elisha, who was already, you know, taking care of his family livestock, but uh, he pursued uh, Elijah and also wanted a double portion of the anointing. Okay, from Elijah. King Saul or uh, Saul who became, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, you mean uh, Saul who became Paul or King? Okay, King Saul and Paul, okay. Samuel, okay, what about Samuel? Okay, he gave his life to God, okay. Noah? Yes, Noah is a good example. Yes, Noah is also a good example. Uh, Joseph. Joseph. Okay, Joseph. Um, yeah, we can think. Daily, daily sacrifice is okay, but I'm thinking about life sacrifice. That was because of the injustice that happened to him, but he had a right attitude and God changed him. Uh, Noah is a good example because, you know, Noah, uh, God told him to do something 
and uh, you know we don't know how many after almost 100 or 120 years a flood came but people were mocking him where is the rain you're building such a big uh, uh, ark yes steven okay Okay, Stephen and uh, okay, people are throwing stone uh, to him. Uh, that is, um, that is, he made a daily sacrifice in this one, but uh, did God ask him to do something that he left everything and did? Uh, but a good try. Thank you. Moses, yes. What about Moses? Yeah, you know, God had order, I mean, orchestrated things that he was you know, taking care in the palace, okay, he could have been the next pharaoh, even though when he came to know about his identity, that he is not an Egyptian. Uh, yeah, even here, uh, Jay Chin has said that, uh, uh, has given the example of Moses. Thank you, Jay Chin. And so, you know, um, we see that, uh, what does Moses do? Once he knows his identity, he does not say, okay, I don't want to be the slave. You know, I want to live in the palace. I want to identify with the Egyptians. I'm going to be the next pharaoh. But he was willing to give up, right? He was uh, willing to uh, choose to be, uh, you know, the reproaches um, of God's people than choosing to uh, the 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 riches of Egypt. Okay, so uh, we see that that's, a, that's also a good example. Okay, so life sacrifices are a turning point in our lives, which means you know we have to make a decision, and there is no turning back. Yes, Sean. Apostles, yes, uh, the apostles, the disciples, you know, they were uh, good. There was a call about fishermen. It was a total turnaround. They just left their nets and they started following Jesus, a good example. Thank you. Okay. So these decisions that, uh, you know, um, that we make is a turning point. Life sacrifices, a turning point in our life. Uh, uh, you know, these decisions that we make, uh, you know, we cannot turn back. And they change our life drastically. They have a huge impact on our lives. They make a big change in our life. Um, and, uh, you know, it brings a turning point in our life. Prabhu says, John the Baptist, uh, okay, being a forerunner for Jesus Christ. Okay, so you know some of these. Uh, thank you, Prabhu. So some of these life uh, sacrifices can be God asking us to move from one place to another. It can also mean leaving your good job where you're already a doctor, an engineer, a chef, or you know, you know, principal or teacher, whatever, and going to be a missionary or a, you know, a, a pastor or whatever. You know, fulfilling God's call. And we know history has a lot of examples. Okay, you all know Hudson Taylor. The missionary Hudson Taylor, where where does he go as a missionary to? China. And in those days, you know, for all of these people who are coming from American and European countries, it was very difficult to come to Asian countries. Why? Because Asian countries were not well developed. There was a lot of sickness, malaria and diseases and everything else. But in spite of all these, these people were willing to give up their lives, their luxury, their comfortable living and go to these places where they knew there is uh, it's very hostile. It means people are not going to be very friendly with them. And there's a lot of sickness and there's a lot of disease. So we see Hudson Taylor going to China. Uh, William Carey, where did he come? India. Okay, he came to Kolkata. Okay, and um, it was very sad. I mean, you know how he lost all his children because of malaria. His wife became mad. Once uh, his, um, you know, he was so involved in um, translating the Bible. I think he's translated into so many languages. You know, his printing press was burned down. Everything came down to ashes. But I tell you, he's a man of endurance. You know, he picks up everything and starts everything. Okay, that is the call of God on his life. That's a life sacrifice. That is where, you know, there is um, changes in the life drastically. There's no turning back. You know, David Livingston, where did he go? Africa. You know, he could have, he, you know, he could have continued uh, practicing in his own country, but he gives up everything and goes to Africa. Okay, so we see that these people made life sacrifices. There are many more. And, um, you know, God honors them for it. But it's not going to be 
easy. Okay, it's going to be difficult. Now we look at uh, spirit-led sacrifices versus uh, flesh, sa fleshly sacrifices. Okay, uh, when we make a sacrifice to God, it has to be led by God. Sometimes we can foolishly make sacrifices thinking that we are doing it for God. God is going to be pleased, you know, but, you know, God is not asking for it. Right? God is not asking for it. And so when we make those fleshly, when we make those sacrifices, we are trying to please God and God is not asking us to do it. It's not going to bear any fruit. It's not going to bear any fruit in our life. It's not going to bear any fruit in anyone else's life. Let me give you an example. For example, uh, now, you know, um, one man says, you know, I gave up my job. I was earning, uh, you know, I was working in a software company. Uh, I gave up my job because I want to join uh, in, into full-time ministry. Okay, so we, wow, you know, gave up his big job and everything. But if you really see what the person is doing, you know, um, the person was, when he was working in this, uh, in the IT company, maybe he was getting up at, uh, you know, six, seven o'clock in the morning, baking, uh, working till late in the night, you know, and had no time for family and this and that. But here, you know, he's, as a pastor, he's waking up at 10 o'clock in the morning, he can get more sleep because, you know, all prayer meetings start after that, in the afternoon or evenings. And, uh, you know, he has a whole day, so he's willing to take his children to school. He is willing to, you know, do some uh, fixing some house thing, works, uh, uh, you know, work at home, taking care of things at home, buying groceries. I'm not saying that's all wrong. But what I'm saying here is, you know, uh, this man is, um, when he was in his full-time job, he was totally very, very busy. He had no time for family, for uh, home, for the even things of God. But here he's saying, I've left my job, sacrificing my job to join full-time ministry. But when you see what he's doing, you know, there's hardly a few hours of ministry that he does in the day or even spending time in the, the Lord. And so, you know, there is no sacrifice in it. And then the person is thinking, you know, the, I'm not bearing any fruit. You know, why is there no fruitfulness? Because there is no sacrifice. Because we know that sacrifice results in fruitfulness okay so if you're not making one way to know whether you're making a fleshly sacrifice or one way you know whether you're sacrificing according to the will and plan of god is to know see whether your life is bearing fruit also an important thing to know if you're in the right place the right time is to know whether you're bearing fruit suppose you know uh, the same example of uh, william braham when he was god had called him to be a uh, healing minister, he was bearing fruit. But when he got into something that he was not called into, preaching and teaching, was he bearing fruit? No. So that was fleshly sacrifice. What he did as um, a minister of God and serving God was a spirit-led sacrifice. And when he, when he did the spirit-led sacrifice, there was fruit, but the fleshly uh, area, there was no fruits so flesh cannot give birth to fruits okay um you know things that are initiated by our own flesh will never bear fruits what the bible says what is born of the flesh is flesh what is born of the spirit is spirit and is the spirit who gives life okay and the flesh does not profit anything that's what paul writes and says yes Another example, hmm. Hmm. Okay, good question. So he's saying that, you know, if um, he wants to attend all night prayer and he has a class tomorrow and he knows if he attends all night prayer, he will sleep during the class so he's not going to benefit anyway by attending the class so what what do you think what should he do if he attends the whole night prayer 
and attends the thing. Is it a fleshly sacrifice or a spirit led sacrifice? Yes, Sean. Yeah, I think we need to have discernment and also ask the Spirit of God because He leads us. So for your example, maybe what I would do is if I have to attend class, I know that, you know, I can be fresh till I can stay up till 12 o'clock. So maybe I'll attend a prayer from 9 to 12 or 11 and then, you know, go back home and go to sleep at 12 and wake up at uh, 6 or 7 and then attend class. So I've kind of attended part of the uh, all night prayer and I've also been able to uh, do justice to my classroom. So we need to actually, God has given us, yes, we has given us our mental faculties, our brain, and we need to think and see what works best for our own um, bodies. But here it's, uh, you know, more talking about, for example, you know, um, God is uh, calling you, like for example, God was calling me to do children's ministry. Okay. But I wanted to do, get into counseling. Okay, so if I were counseling with drug addicts and alcoholics, but I was willing to give that up to say, okay, God, you want me to, you know, do children's ministry, I'm willing to uh, do that. What if I had pursued counseling drug addicts and alcoholics? Yeah, I would have ministered to them, but I would not have been as fruitful as God would have used me uh, fruitfully in the min in children's ministry. The same way if God is telling you to go to Orissa or to go to you know, Chhattisgarh, you know, and uh, North India, and uh, and you're saying, no, God, you know, actually, um, I want to stay in Bangalore, so, you know, I can be a pastor here, because things are more comfortable, things are more easy, I can learn, and all of that, and God is saying, no, I want you to go as a missionary to Chhattisgarh or Sun, and you're not willing to go, then that is, you know, you're staying back in Bangalore, you're being part of a church, you know, and you're getting frustrated with things here, you're not you no, know, things are not moving, uh, you're not happy. It's basically, you know, you're not there at the right time, the right, right place. And it's a flesh led sacrifice than a spirit led uh, sacrifice. Okay. Yeah, you understood? Okay. Yes, uh, Anand. Okay. Okay. So um, you have an exam tomorrow and you won't, sorry? Oh, you have an exam on Sunday. Oh, yeah, I know there are many competitive exams that happen on a Sunday. It's not happening every day, all through the year, Sundays when you're attending. So you have to attend that competitive exam on a Sunday. I think God understands he's not going to punish you, <laughs> you know? He's not going to punish you. Yeah, you can attend that uh, the Sunday because it's just one exam that you have to write on a Sunday, which is important for your future, for your career, and you have no control and say about the uh, exam. And if you don't do it, you will not get into the course that you want to. Yes, but if you're uh, if you're looking, sorry, Sean, if you're looking at joining a a course uh, like like some children go for football or tennis uh, or badminton on a Sunday morning then the parents should, you know, then take a decision. No, I mean, you know, we can, there are many other football coaching ha happens during the week. We'll put my child, but not on a Sunday morning. Yes, Sean. No, I don't think for exams, they will, you know, move things for our convenience. See, they won't move things for our country. But I know of an athlete, I think, in the Olympics who did not run on the Sunday. Huh? Sorry? Eric. 
Yes, he did not run on the Sunday. He was willing to give it up. That's a big sacrifice. Uh, but then he ran another race, which he was, uh, which was not his. Uh, you know, um, what he was not. Yeah, his his um, uh, not uh, trained. It was not something that he was very good at. You know, uh, but he won in that. So you know, it again. It depends upon what the Lord is telling you to do. Okay. Good discussion. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, so we need to um, make our, um, uh, you know, sacrifices based on what the Spirit is leading us and not on what our flesh is telling us, not our own will. Okay, sometimes we can do things, we can have programs, we can have do, do things and we can say, okay, we had a big crusade, nobody came, you know, only five or ten people accepted the Lord. Was it fleshly-led sacrifice or was it spirit-led sacrifice is a big question to ask. If it's God-initiated, God is telling us, then he will move mightily, okay? So Paul says in First Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 to 15, can somebody read that, please? First Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 to 15. Thank you. So here we see that our works will be tested by fire. And you know, whatever stands, we know it is spirit led. Whatever is burnt, comes to the ground, does not last. It is fleshly sacrifice. Okay? So whatever is of the flesh will be burnt. Um, and whatever is split led will stand the test of fire. Okay? Now, just a couple more points before we, two more points before we end this uh, chapter. The price that God wants you and me to pay will me not be the same price that he's calling somebody else to pay. Now, if somebody comes and gives a testimony in, in your church saying, God asked me to leave my job and go into full-time ministry, you know, we are so excited and happy that they did it. We also have a heart to serve God. We also have a burden to serve God. It doesn't mean that I go and resign my job and get into full-time ministry. Did God call me? Okay, if God has called me, then... Yes, I leave my job and I don't do it because somebody else is doing it and get emotional and excited about it and do it. Okay, God wants us to be in the workplace. He wants us to be in, in the business field because we want, he wants us to impact people. Uh, if everyone is going to be pastors, then who's going to be impacting people in the workplace? Okay, so it's don't do something because somebody else is doing because that person, you're a, you're a pastor of a church. If some other pastor has, you know, um, God has told him to fast and pray, uh, and uh, you know He's going to give him. Uh, uh, he's going to build a church in 50 days. You know, another pastor can't say, "Oh, you know, he built in 50 days, so I'm. We are, our church is also going to fast and pray, and we are also going to do the same thing." No, you know that's fleshly led sacrifice. Now this pastor is doing it because he was specifically told by God to do this okay so we go on the leading of god and not what is our own will or what what other person is uh, doing pursue what god is calling you to do so well, every church god has a mandate okay he wants some to get into missions some to be apostles you know some uh, churches to be evangelists in their own city whatever is god is asking you to do and for your church you concentrate on that you don't look at other churches and say they're doing it we'll do it Okay, so we need to do just what God is asking us to do. Okay, and we need to play, uh, you know, um, serving God comes with a price. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be exciting always. It's not going to be very happy. Uh, you don't feel like, uh, you won't feel up and about every morning getting up to say, oh, I'm going to go serve God. Sometimes you feel like, oh, I'm so tired. Did I do the right thing? Did I take the right call of God in my life? I'm so exhausted, so tired. But you know, irrespective of your feelings just continue fulfilling god's purpose for your life pay the price with joy 
okay with happiness because you're paying a price uh, don't let others suffer along with you okay you need to carry your cross you need to uh, you can't put it on somebody else's shoulders god is asking you to giving you a responsibility don't put it on somebody else you need to carry it and the last thing is giving up and taking on okay giving up and taking on we look at an example from first corinthians chapter 9 verse 1 you know paul is saying in in first corinthians chapter 9 verse 1 he says don't we have the right to take a believing wife what wife believing wife okay so he's saying paul is saying don't i have the right to take a believing wife but he says but i choose not to get married okay so paul is giving up something what is he giving up the right to get married why is he giving up the right to get married why is he giving up the right to get married for the work of god so he can be totally concentrated fully committed engaged in the work of god he has no family responsibilities okay and then uh, in verse 6 uh, he he's asked another question he says don't we have the right to refrain from working okay don't we have the right to stop working you know you know paul he was running his own business yes and he was also a apostle and a missionary okay he was having his own tent making business so he was not dependent on the churches and the people um, that he was serving or he used to use his own money for travels for his own food because he was having his own tent making business okay and he says we are preaching the gospel so the bible says that those who preach the gospel have the right to live of the gospel so he says yes i have the right because I'm preaching and teaching the gospel, I have a right to live off the gospel. That means all the churches that I'm preaching and teaching, you know, you have to give me um, a salary kind of thing, and I have the right to live off that gospel. But he's saying, I'm willing to give up that right. I'm willing to refrain from that right. I'm willing to work and not be a burden to others. So there are some things that we can give up and some things that we can take on okay some things that we can give up some things that we can um, uh, take on and both of them are sacrifices whether we give up something we take up something both are sacrifices but again we need to do it spirit-led and not fleshly led yes sean Yes. Yes, true. You know, uh, many pastors, uh, they make use of their congregation uh, to get things from them. Sometimes they preach sermons just to, uh, you know, please their the son so that, you know, they can get from them. Uh, they uh, kind of favor the rich people so that they can get benefits. And it's very sad how pastors really have um, uh, exploited um, uh, people. We have many numerous examples of pastors uh, exploiting people, but here, you know, there is um, like we have to give up some things and take on some things just to honor the gospel that we are preaching and teaching, to honor God who we are serving so that, you know, people are not um, uh, hurt. There are many people who are hurt deeply because of what uh, the pastors have, um, have done and how they have treated and manipulated them and controlled every area of their uh, life. It's very sad. Yes. Okay. Any questions? Any questions on this chapter? Yes, Rin. Okay.
They wasted that much years for what? In working. Okay? Okay, so Rin's question is, there are some people who give up their jobs after many years and they get into ministry and they say that they uh, like wasted so many years in the corporate field or just working rather than doing ministry. Um, well, um, it's not a waste. God was actually preparing them. Uh, in in we, we saw that, right? God takes us through a preparation process. And at the right time, at the right moment, the Kairos moment, the God-appointed time, He brings us into, uh, uh, into ministry to do what He wants. And, you know, we, God is uh, not a, you know, uh, works outside time and space. So they can see those 30 years as a waste when they did not do ministry. But, you know, just like Jesus, three years He did what He you know, he could have done in 30 years. Okay, three years he completed the full and fulfilled the mission of God. So, you know, God can use just three, five years of their life to do everything that he want, he, he would have done with them the last 30 years of their life. So it's God taking them to the preparation process so that, you know, they are, um, they are ready at the right time. And, uh, you know, God is, he does everything beautifully in his own time. So no regrets about it. Did that answer your question, Rin? No? Okay. Okay, we'll uh, go for our break uh, and we'll come back after the break. Thank you all.